Here now to discuss this and where deals are going is PitchBook analyst Kyle Stanford. Kyle, welcome to the program. What have your studies found? Is this a permanent shift or is this just that rich VC moved to his ranch in Wyoming for a couple of months to wait out the pandemic, but will ultimately return to Sand Hill Road? You know, thanks, Brian. And that's definitely something that we're really interested in seeing um, how the, everything plays out over the past few years. You know, scrutinizing individual companies and investors' reasons for leaving the Bay Area is going to, you know, produce a wide area of factors. But this is a trend that we've seen, you know, really growing over the past, you know, five to ten years. There's been a concerted effort by the industry to get capital and deal flow to areas outside of the Bay Area. Not because the Bay Area is, is declining or, or is not what it used to be, but because great companies are being developed and, and grown everywhere. Um, that being said, we do believe that the Bay Area is going to continue to be the center of VC. Over the past five years, $151 billion has been raised by around 900 funds in the Bay Area, and that capital is not going to immediately disappear. Um, you know, we do think it is a overall yeah, Kyle, a very nobody, positive. Let's be, I'm looking at your data, looking at your data here. Yeah. Nobody's crying for Silicon Valley. I mean, when we say it may shrink a little bit this year. It's still probably above where it was about five years ago. Let's not make any mistake. Sure. Silicon Valley is not toast. The Bay Area is not over. Yeah, some people have left, yeah. but it is still going to punch well above its population weight. Will it not? No, that's exactly what we feel. I um, mean, you know, the Bay Area is going to continue to, um, you know, develop and grow those companies. If you look at the track record of the companies that have exited over a billion dollars, a majority of those are still in the Bay Area. And for other ecosystems to really grow and develop and, and you know, punch above their weight, they're going to need to come and, and have those exits to draw more investors and develop, you know, local capital that's able to support those ecosystems. You had 321 what you call mega deals closing in 2020. I mean, the jump of nearly a hundred is just insane. Is it that there's so much money out there? Is it that everyone's sitting at home and bored, so why not invest in something? Or is it that there really are truly, Kyle, that many new great companies that deserve that kind of investment? Well, if you look at kind of what's happened at that top end of the market, you know, companies are staying private much longer and extending their growth in the private markets. That has drawn a lot of the, pri the public equity managers that are you know, traditionally in um, the IPOs and, and um, just investing in public markets into the private markets. And they have a lot more capital than traditional VC firms. You know, so when we see these mega deals being closed at you know, 320 last year, and we expect probably more this year as well, a lot of it has to do with those non-traditional investors investing in the private markets and making sure that they are able to capture some of the growth that is happening there. Well, over the for the past ten years or so, we're looking at IPOs. The average um, years from founding to IPO for VC back company at at over nine years, um, and, it, and that's continued to be, you know, growing and extending the these private lifetimes of the of the companies. Yeah, making ensuring more profitability for the early investors and maybe a little bit less for the mom and pops buying the actual equity. Still really <laughs> interesting data, Kyle Stanford of PitchBook. Kyle, pleasure to have you on. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks so much, Brian. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.